Okay, guys, so we got this 96 Jeep Cherokee. They complain as the windows don't work, so like none of them work. No matter which one I press, nothing happens to anything. So I also noticed door locks don't work. Does the window, do the mirrors work? Mirrors don't work. So I'm going to quick look up a diagram, see if anything's related here. Let's see if any of these other ones work. Okay, so that side works. This side works. Let's see the back. Uh, do we have the windows locked out? I don't know if it has to be out or in. Okay, so that one doesn't work. Let's try this side. Nothing. So, what I really think is happening is we either have a broken wire, which I'll quick check in the there, or because our switch is bad. So, I'll quick quick pull the wire back here, see if we got a broken wire in the door. If not, then we'll pop the switch out. I don't remember if you can take the switch out or if you have to take that. I guess you can take the switch out. Yeah, we should be able to take the switch out. But I'm going to lean more towards the broken wire since nothing works. And they probably share a common power or ground going into here. Okay guys, so everything looks good in here. I'm surprised nothing's broke. All the wires actually look really good. I don't remember if I had any issues before on these older ones, like this old. No, 2000s or so, they always had problems with door jam wires. But everything looks good there. So I'm going to quick bring up a diagram, we'll see if this stuff shares a common power or ground. Then we'll know what to go after. Okay guys, so I got our diagrams here, so uh, I didn't really look at this yet. So we got our circuit breaker here that feeds our, our power windows and... Let's see, left front, driver's door. It's a driver's door module on a 96. That's interesting. I didn't think they had a driver's door module on a... Oh, is this a, this is a Grand Cherokee? I thought these were just Cherokees. Oh, you know what? I guess it is a Grand Cherokee. Yeah, it is a Grand Cherokee. Because uh, it does have the whole fancy display down there. So I guess maybe we got a driver's door module that's down. That's interesting. Guess I'll grab my scan tool and see if we can communicate with this. So we got a driver's door module. Let's see, what controls over here we got our power door locks. Let's see, driver's door module. Huh. That's exciting. So I guess I'll grab a scan tool and we'll see if we can even communicate with this thing. Uh, let's see, maybe we should look to see what powers our driver's door module. So I'll look that up real quick and then we'll come back. So guys, I brought up the power distribution real quick and it looks like the 30 amp breaker feeds both the passenger door module and the driver's door module. So we know our circuit breaker is good. So I guess we could check the, check the power and ground real quick right here at the door. I'm pretty sure they're going to be good, but we'll check them real quick. Okay, guys, so if I push my test light in, you can see we're, we can pull 10 amps on our power and ground right here at the door. So that confirms that's good. So I'm going to get this cover off, and then we'll go after this driver's door module. So guys, I just did a full system scan on there, and look at this. Look at what module's missing. So we got the passenger door module, no driver's door module. We just checked our powers and grounds. I guess we'll check the network. And if the network's good, we got a bad door module. Isn't that pretty exciting? Let's see what's in this passenger door module. Just so that we know what we can expect. But like no modules complaining. Let's see. Now the modules are complaining about the driver's door module. I think that's kind of funny. Hmm. Okay. Look at that, there's nothing complaining. What's this complaining? No CCD bus. 
Huh, this door. We'll have to look at the CCD bus. Because, uh, the driver's door module communicates on the CCD bus, but I bet you everything else communicates on the CCD bus. So I guess we'll look them up. We'll look up the CCD bus, and then we'll go from there. But let's see, is there like a... Because sometimes you can do like a network. Test. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything in here. So we'll look that up, and then we'll come back. Okay, guys, so I brought up the network right here. So we got all our modules just go into splice packs on this CCD bus. So we'll get our lab scope out. We'll connect it up real quick. We'll see if we have a uh, signal over here. And if we do, it's a bad module. Real quick and done. I don't know why it's missing like a connector. I don't know if that's optional. But we have a no-com with it, so. And no modules are complaining about it, so even if we were to scan it originally, we wouldn't have known without looking at a diagram. Okay, guys. So I got my breakout box set up. And connected to DLC port right there. I'm back prepping the connector right there. Uh, let me get the flashlight over here. Because here's our module. Got the Pico Scub recording. You can see the waveform, okay? See how it's like kind of noisy? So now if I unplug this right here, watch what happens to our waveform. It got a little better. Let's plug this back in. We might have to shut our battery charger off because I think our battery charger is putting some frequency into this too now. Let's plug this back in. Look at that. Look how much more noisier that got. You can see all the little spikes all over the place. Disconnect it. There we go. Boom. Let's shut the battery charger off real quick. This battery shot in this thing. Let's see, what's our voltage at? 12.4. So, now look at our pattern. Look at how nice our pattern looks. It's not perfect. I think there's still another module causing an issue. But let's, uh, let's plug this back in and we'll see what happens. As soon as we plug this in, look at our spikes and our voltage drops. Unplug it. Boom. Voltage changes. So we definitely have a bad module here. This module's killing the network. Oh. Really causing an issue on the network. Isn't that crazy? So, calling a bad module. I'm going to save some captures. And then... And then we'll go from there. But the pattern's the same down at the breakout box. So guys, I got a new window switch for the Jeep. It's kind of dirty. But well, let's see if this works. Let's see if I can set the alarm off. Oh crap, door's locked. There we go. Wouldn't that be amazing if we plug this in and it just works like right away? Let's see if we can do this one-handed. I had to get a used one, I couldn't find any new ones. And I called all the junkyards, and they're like, we don't have anything like that. And then the one was like, oh, look at that, did it just work? Oh man, guys, look at that. Let's try starting this thing up. If the oh, battery's dead. Let's see if the window at least works. I hear something clicking inside the window, so that's a good sign. Let's see if the mirror works. Oh, look at that, the mirror works. See that? Let's see if the other side works. The other side is working, guys. Look at that. Oh man, I am happy. So I guess we'll have to jumpstart this. 
and then we'll get the panel and everything together. But that is a good sign. So guys, look at this. The window works. Let's see if the other side works. Look at that. Rear ones, they work. This side, bam. Lock and unlock, this is awesome. Mirror works. So yeah, that's all it was. It was a bad door module. This thing sounds horrible. So I'm gonna get the scope hooked up then too. We're gonna charge this up, we'll get the scope hooked up. And we'll look to see what our network looks like, see if our network looks any better. I have a feeling it's gonna look a lot better. It's probably not gonna be perfect because I'm sure there's other issues this thing is. What? 24 years old. So. It starts running into issues. Okay guys, so I got the Pico set up. Connected back up. And look at this, look at our waveform. Looks so much better. Now I have to do some research, see what how this CCD bus is supposed to act actually, but I know it was like an early can style. And I think I think it's a good pattern. I could be wrong. But hey, the window switch is working. Like I said, like it's working. So it can send messages. I'm gonna get the scan tool, we'll set the scan tool back up. I'm gonna save a capture of this. And then we'll look at it because this is such old technology, like it's still relevant to today. But I don't remember what it's supposed to look like. So, guys, look, we did a full system scan just now using the Think Diag. Driver's door module shows up. Let's go into this driver's door module. Read fault codes, no fault codes. Let's see, read data stream. This is pretty interesting. So we can actually look at current for the, putting the window down. Look at that, there's this delay. I don't know why it says one amp because you're gonna get, you're gonna get more than one amp going down. Oh, it says seven amps going down. Let's see what it shows going up. There's a pretty big delay and it says it's closed or open. That is awesome. See. Oh, we can look at mirror switch down and up. This is pretty interesting. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Let's see, can we do window down? This is awesome. So we can we can look at all the data, that's pretty awesome. So we'll look at the look at the network later and we'll review it. Hey guys, I wanted to go over our captures with the CCD bus. So I was doing some research. I don't know what the exact voltage specs are for the CCD bus, but when I was looking, it seems like they operate between a hundred and a hundred and fifty millivolt voltage swing, kinda of like a CAN network. So we're going to measure these, see what we have. This is our bag capture. At least I think this is our bag capture. Let's zoom out. Oh, am I zoomed out already? Okay, let me drag through this. Let's see. Oh, this is our good capture. Let's go to our bag capture. Open. We'll open this one. This should be our bag capture. There we go. See our waves? Let's zoom these in a little bit. Try this down. There we go. Let's see if we can do one more. We'll go 20 times. There we go. Let's zoom in our other one. Is it 
down. I think it should be up top. Here we go. Okay, so you can see our wave right here that we had on these. Let's measure our wave. So we had 2.279 to 2.343 volt swing on that one, where it's just noise. Measure this other one. Let's see. So two point yeah, look at that. They're both like a it's like a fifty to sixty five millivolt swing on these right here. Or just noise going through there. Let's measure what our peak is one seventy two. Let's try to get like an average here. These are all different. So there you go, you can see up here two hundred and seventy two millivolt difference from top to bottom and on the bottom one is 129 because this noise I think is rotting on top of these two let's go to let's go back look at these other ones you can see how some of these are elevated compared to the other ones so now we'll open up our other capture see recent files we'll open up is it this one yeah it looks like this one so this is after we replaced our module There we go. Look how clean that looks compared to the other one. Look at that. So let's measure these from top to bottom. I'll measure from right here. Measure from down here. So these bottom ones, we have like 150 on the red millivolt difference from top to bottom. But if we drag this down a little bit, yeah, we're like 140 to 150 on average. And this top one around 100 millivolts. If we go through these, look how nice this looks. Now I think we still have some, yeah, we still have some messages that are higher. So there still might be an issue. But as you can see, our modules were able to communicate fine. We saw our, we saw this module on the network. See, like we have this one right here. So it fixed their problem that they were complaining about. Now it is a used car lot, so I didn't go into depth trying to fix other stuff. They wanted the door fixed. We fixed the door. We proved what it was, and we saw how it was disrupting the network. So I hope you guys like it. See you later.